Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the SWAS NFL Week 7 already. We are into Week 7. It's Thursday Night Football. We got Broncos Saints in New Orleans. Let's go. Quick announcement. Uh, due to popular demand, I'm bringing back the daily uh, betting report posts that I used to do. If you've been around, you already know what that is. Um, if you don't know what it is, I post. it's like a blog post and it says, like, these are my bets for the day. This is what I have placed. I'm thinking about placing this. This is my favorite bet, blah, blah, blah. So I'm bringing it back. I've been asked like 25 times. The only difference is going to be instead of doing a post for each sport, I'm just going to do one post that says like Kyle's betting report for the day or whatever I'll call it. And they'll be like, these are the bets I have down in this sport and this sport. Um, so I'll post it every night before I go to sleep. So for those of you that have been asking for those, I'm bringing it back. Oh, and forgot one thing. So the open bets window isn't changing. This isn't replacing that. So if you've been just going on looking at the open bets window, you could still do that. That's that's fine. This is in addition to that. Welcome to the source. The source. Source. Hey, get the source. All right, like I said, Denver's on the road in New Orleans here. Saints are catching two and a half points at home. I actually see a couple threes popping up. So this line's been on the move, moving towards Denver. Uh, totals down at 37 or 37 and a half depending on your sports book. Let's take a look at the pie charts. And according to this data, just over 55% of the tickets coming in on the Saints side, over 60% of the money coming in on the Denver side. But as I always say, take this data with a grain of salt. So let's get into this matchup and we'll start with the Denver offense. Uh, Bo Nix coming along here as a quarterback. Uh, in weeks one through four, the Broncos were averaging just 165 passing yards per game as a team, just 4.8 yards per pass attempt, an average pass rating of 63.9. But the last two weeks, we've seen Bo Nix have back-to-back -back his two best games as an NFL quarterback, 211 yards per game, 55.7% success rate per dropback, an average pass rating of 103.3. Bo Nix coming along. Denver has I wouldn't say a passing attack, but something that's starting to resemble a passing attack. Although we probably should mention that last week's game against the Chargers, pretty much all of their offensive production came in the fourth quarter. Through three quarters, they had zero points and were averaging just 3.16 yards per play. Uh, they scored 16 points in the fourth quarter. That's not to say it doesn't count. I'm just saying pointing at that game and saying Bo Nix played well. That I mean, he he made some plays in the fourth quarter. We'll leave it at that. But no doubt, Bo Nix coming off back-to-back -back his two best games as an NFL quarterback. Uh, the Denver passing offense is still bottom five in the NFL, though. 29th in yards per pass attempt, 29th in success rate per dropback, 27th in EPA, 26th in passing DVOA. The good news is the Saints' pass defense looks nothing like we expected it to look. Sure, if you look at these numbers, it doesn't look that bad. 24th in yards per pass attempt, 14th in success rate, 5th in EPA, 8th in DVOA. It doesn't look that bad. But if you take out the Bryce Young game, the opener against the Panthers, if you take that one out and just look at the last five offenses, they're allowing 68.4% completion, 7.9 yards per attempt, 50.9% percent third down conversions that's 23rd 31st and 32nd so the saints have looked like one of the worst pass defenses in the nfl since week two now the good news for the saints is they're playing denver and the broncos have been equally terrible on third downs they're actually 31st this year converting third down so i suppose that's a sigh of relief for the saints but no question this is a concern the saints with that secondary they're supposed to have a strong pass defense and in the last five weeks they've looked like a bottom five bottom ten unit so is bo nix going to be able to throw the ball on the saints defense uh well let's take a look at the coverage matchups saints are running a lot of too high safety looks 51.2 percent seventh most in the nfl bo nix better passer rating against two high safety looks 79.4 versus 69.3 against one high safety looks okay that's something a little thin but it's something what else can we expect from the saints defense uh well they run a lot of cover one and a lot of cover two they're actually top 10 in frequency in both cover one and cover two Bo Nix significantly better against cover one and cover two versus his overall numbers. Completion percentage, yards per attempt, passer rating, big time throw rate, turnover worthy play rate, all better against cover one and cover two. Look, it's thin. I'm not saying Bo Nix is going to go into New Orleans and throw the ball in this Saints secondary. I'm just saying the Saints pass defense looks bad. I mean, their last two games, they're allowing 328 yards per game, 64.3 percent success rate per dropback is terrible 8.7 yards per attempt it looks bad sure those games were against Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield but still this Saints pass defense isn't giving us a lot to believe in right now and now you add on the fact that the Saints are going to be missing a safety Will Harris uh, he's been put on the IR I think he got hurt in the Chiefs game 
look, I, I'm not saying Bo Nix is going to go off here. Just saying, don't be surprised if, if Bo Nix is able to complete some passes. The Saints defense is, is not looking good right now. And when it comes to the run game, I mean, Denver might be able to run the ball a little bit too. 18th in yards per carry, 13th in success rate per rush, 22nd in EPA, 27th in rushing DVOA. They got off to a slow start. In weeks one and two, they were averaging just 81 and a half rushing yards per game, 3.7 yards per carry as a team, 25.8% success rate per rush. That's bad. It was looking terrible, this Denver rushing attack through two weeks, but look at the last four games. Over 122 rushing yards per game, five yards per carry as a team, 40.7% success rate per rush still isn't excellent, much better than it looked through the first two weeks of the season. And in case you're unfamiliar with the Saints defense, stopping the run is a problem and it has been dating back to last year. This is a bottom five run defense. 30th in the NFL in yards per carry allowed, 27th in success rate per rush, 28th in EPA, 26th in run defense DVOA. This is not a good run defense and they're trending in the wrong direction here. Through weeks one and two, they were only allowing 63 rushing yards per game, 3.1 yards per carry, 24.2 percent success rate per rush that was against the Panthers and the Cowboys look at the four games since then they're allowing over 170 rushing yards per game 6.3 yards per carry almost a 50 percent success rate per rush this looks bad so I almost can't believe I'm saying this Bo Nix a rookie quarterback with that Broncos offense going on the road against the Saints defense with all that talent in the secondary I think they're going to be able to move the football in this game. I think they can run the ball and throw the ball a little bit on them. Here's the problem, though. There is one thing the Saints defense has been very good at locking down in the red zone. They're actually the second best red zone defense in the NFL. And like I mentioned before, Denver is terrible on third downs, and they're really not that good in the red zone either. So even though I do expect the Broncos offense to be able to move the ball in this game, I can't say I trust them to finish drives. I can see him settling for a lot of field goals, which is why, can't believe I'm saying this, Will Lutz over one and a half field goals made. You can get it at minus 125. Will Lutz over one and a half field goals made. I hate kicker props, but I like Denver's offense to move the ball, but I like Dennis Allen's play calling in the red zone. So Will Lutz over one and a half field goals made. On the other side, we got the Saints offense, and they're going to be in for a bit of a tough matchup here. Numbers on the season don't look that bad. They're 18th in yards per play, 15th in success rate, 19th in EPA, 16th in DVOA. Problem is all the injuries and also Denver's defense is playing out of this world. This is one of the best defenses in the NFL. Second in yards per play, fifth in success rate, fourth in EPA, seventh in DVOA. And right off the bat, I don't like this matchup for the Saints offense because obviously we're looking at Spencer Rattler at quarterback again, right? Derek Carr's listed as doubtful. What's one thing you definitely want to have if you're starting a rookie quarterback or an inexperienced quarterback? Run support. I don't know if that's going to be there. The Saints run primarily a zone blocking run scheme, second most in the NFL that plays directly into the strength of the Denver defense. They're actually one of the best defenses in the NFL against zone blocking schemes. Fifth in yards per carry allowed, second in success rate per rush against zone blocking schemes. Not to mention, we've seen the Saints zone rushing attack fall off a cliff since Eric McCoy got hurt. In weeks one and two before McCoy got hurt, they were eighth in yards per carry, fourth in success rate per rush. In the games since McCoy got hurt, 27th and 22nd. So they're not getting near the production from the run game than they were before Eric McCoy went down in week two. So the Saints should really struggle to get the run game going in this one. And that is just not great news considering the passing attack with Spencer Rattler last week didn't look particularly great. He completed just 55% of his passes, 243 yards, 6.1 yards, per attempt a touchdown and two picks and yeah it was his first career start let's cut him some slack we actually did see rattler make a few throws i mean he wasn't absolutely terrible i personally like spencer rattler i think he's got a lot of arm talent the problem is look what he's working with here this offensive line is a mess we mentioned their star center eric mccoy is still out caesar ruiz is going to miss another game that's their starting right guard shane lemieux that's their third guard that would be the guy starting in place of caesar ruiz he's out as well lucas patrick is listed as questionable we don't even know if he's going to be out there chris olave has been ruled out rashid shaheed he's been ruled out Taysom hill is doubtful so in addition to spencer rattler making just his second career start he's also working with what is a shell of the Saints offense. I mean, this has to be the most injured offense in the entire NFL right now. Feel kind of bad for the guy because if you're a college football fan, last year with South Carolina, I mean, they had the worst offensive line in the SEC next to maybe Vanderbilt. His entire season at South Carolina was essentially just him running for his life. And here he is, he gets a chance in the NFL to do <laughs> what should be the same exact thing. Now, I do have some good news for Spencer Rattler. Sertan's been ruled out. Uh, not only the best defensive player on the Broncos, one of the best defensive players 
players in the entire NFL. I believe he's in concussion protocol. He is not going to play in that uh, in this game, which is huge. Also, another good sign for Spencer Rattler here. We just saw Justin Herbert have somewhat of a successful day against this Denver defense. I mean, he didn't light the scoreboard up or anything. 21 of 34, 237 yards, 7 yards per attempt, a touchdown, a 92-4 passer rating. He spread the ball around. 7 different receivers had 2 to 4 catches. 0 had 5 plus receptions. So that shows us that this Denver defense that looks so impenetrable, right? It's beatable. I mean, you can throw the ball on them. I don't know if Spencer Rattler is going to be able to do it, but it's definitely a good sign that Justin Herbert was able to do it a bit. Here's where I worry most for Spencer Rattler. The Denver Broncos pass rush. And you might look at this graphic and say, Kyle, who cares? 15th in pressure rate. That's nothing crazy. Take into consideration who they've played. Their last three opponents were against the Jets, the Raiders, and the Chargers. Those three offensive lines in terms of pressure rate allowed, fourth, eighth, and first. So this Broncos pass rush is coming off three straight games against top 10 pass protections. Now they get matched up against this beat up Saints offensive line. And keep in mind, this is a Saints offensive line whose problems have been a bit hidden by Derek Carr. Derek Carr gets the ball out so quickly and doesn't take sacks. He's ninth in time to throw, second in pressure to sack rate. A quarterback like Derek Carr will help hide your pass protection problems, which is why if you look at the pass blocking numbers for the Saints, they're just 15th in pressure rate. That's not that bad. 31st in pass blocking grade. The reason they haven't allowed a ton of pressures is Derek Carr gets rid of the ball quickly. Last week against the Bucs, who, by the way, don't even have a good pass rush, the Bucs. <laughs> uh, but last week against the Bucs, Spencer Rattler, he was pressured on 18 dropbacks. He completed just 33.3% of his passes, no touchdowns, a pick. He took five sacks and had a passer rating of 19.8 really struggling with the pressure and that was against Tampa Bay like I said earlier the Bucks pass rush hasn't even been any good what Todd Bowles and the Bucks defense does is blitz the shit out of you they're top five in blitz frequency want to know who else is top five in blitz frequency the Broncos except they have more talent and a better defense than the Bucks this is it's a really scary matchup for Spencer Rattler last week against the Bucks he was blitzed on 45.8 percent of his dropbacks I expect to see some of the same here uh, with the Broncos defense. I, this is a tough matchup, which is why when it comes to placing a bet, I can't even believe I'm considering doing this. I'm going to lay two and a half on the road with a rookie quarterback. That's disgusting, but I have to do it. This is the much better team right now, the much healthier team right now. I <laughs> Give me the Broncos minus two and a half. I hate this. Give me the Broncos minus two and a half and Will Lutz over one and a half field goals. Oh, man. I'm going through it right now. My bets are a rookie quarterback on the road laying two and a half and a field goal prop. This is what rock bottom looks like. <laughs> so give me Denver minus two and a half. Give me Will Lutz over one and a half field goals. I've been getting crushed in these primetime games, man. I, don't, I mean, I'm doing all right. Had a good college football Saturday. NFL Sunday was okay. My top bet hit. But these primetime games, and it's, you know what sucks? They get a billion views. They get like 40,000 views. And I keep losing these stupid primetime games. And here I am taking a rookie quarterback on the road laying two and a half. Ugh. This is disgusting. Denver minus two and a half. Will Lutz over one and a half field goals. Let's do it. If you'd like to see all the bets I have open, head over to kylekerms.com and click on open bets. You'll see all mine as well as everyone else on the staff here. Also, if you sign up to Sauce Network Plus, it comes with access to the Discord and you can participate in the weekly betting league. $150 and one of these trophies go to the winner every single week. So if you're interested, head over to the website and sign up. Live show, 4 p.m. Eastern time. We'll go through NHL. Uh, there's no WNBA on. Uh, MLB playoffs college football there's two games and the nfl we'll go through all of it 4 p.m eastern time same time as always if you're able to make it we'd love to see you in the comments let's have ourselves a good one please remember to bet responsibly if you need me hit me up in the discord